Hey guys, this is Aaron Carmen from AXE Electronic, back with the next video in our series of videos covering basic circuit analysis. So last time we talked about capacitors, and we had a nice, broad, intuitive look at what capacitors are and how they function. But now we're going to look at how they behave in our circuits, and how they behave uh, as time passes in our circuits. Okay? So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to review, make sure we know what a capacitor is. So a capacitor is just two plates separated by some distance. Okay? And that separation, uh, if, if we put charge into it, what it's going to do is there's going to be a charge build up on one plate of positive charge. On the other plate there's going to be negative charge. Okay? So we're going to be storing energy in an electric field in that capacitor. Okay? And that energy, you know, if we connected it to a resistor, let's say, it will discharge that energy into the resistor. So it'll send these positive charges out into the resistor, okay, and then those positive charges will come over here and then cancel out with a negative charge, so it'll discharge itself through a resistor like that, okay? So what we know is that these capacitors can charge and they can discharge. So let's first look at how we charge a capacitor, okay? So let's start off with just a very simple circuit like this. So we have a voltage source, which I'll call Vs for now. We have a switch, which will be important, then we have a resistor and a capacitor, and that closes the circuit. So that resistor is going to have a resistance R and a capacitance, or a capacitor, the capacitance of C. Now this switch, we're going to say that this switch closes at time t equals zero. So if we were plotting this stuff on a graph, then whenever time is equal to zero, time t is equal to zero, then the switch closes. And what we can see is that whenever we close the switch, that capacitor is going to start charging. Okay? Now, physicists have already shown that the voltage, or sorry, the current through a capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of its voltage with respect to time. Okay? So using this, we can set up a differential equation that will allow us to solve for the, uh, for the voltage across the capacitor at any point in time given this situation. But I'm not going to do the differential equation derivation because number one, it's sort of complicated. Number two, it doesn't really add anything other than making us a little bit more confused about how we get to this whole situation. So instead I'm just going to give you the final result for this case because this is really one of the only cases we're interested in. So the final result for this is going to be the voltage across the capacitor is equal to Vs, which is the source voltage, times open parentheses 1 minus e to the negative t over rc close parentheses and this is true whenever t is greater than or equal to 0 if t is less than 0 then vc is just going to be equal to 0 because the capacitor isn't charged so it's not going to have any voltage across it at all okay so this is all you know pretty confusing you know what what does this all mean uh, what does this mean for the circuit? How does this look on a graph? You know, I'm having a hard time visualizing this, and that's that's okay because you know no one has a really easy time visualizing this. So what I did was I went ahead and made uh, some graphics beforehand that I could show you guys. That way you can get a little bit better visualization of what's happening in this circuit. Okay, so here I'm going to show the voltage across or the voltage and current of this capacitor. So the voltage across the capacitor and the current through it. Okay. So let's just look at the voltage for now. I'll use the blue color for voltage. Okay. And we can see that as we start, you know, before we close that switch, we don't have any voltage across that capacitor. And that makes sense because we said it's not charged and we haven't begun charging it yet. So we're not going to have any voltage across it. And then what happens whenever we close that switch, instantly current is going to want to start pouring into that capacitor. Okay, so let's switch over for current now. We can see naturally since the switch is open, current is zero before we get started with this. But once we close the switch, like we said, that capacitor is going to start charging hard because it doesn't have any charge stored in it and it can store charge, so it's going to start charging as fast as possible. That's why you see this current shoot way up. The current shoots way up and reaches its maximum. Now the current here is only limited by the resistor, right? Because the voltage across the capacitance is zero, so the capacitor right now is looking like a short circuit. So 
the resistor is the only thing that's limiting our resistance. So the current that's going through this is actually going to be the source voltage divided by the resistance, which for the example I graphed uh, would be 10 amps in this case, but it can change depending on the specific situation. So we have this current, and then you'll see that this current starts tapering off. You know, this current starts decreasing. And this starts making sense because whenever we start charging the capacitor, the voltage increases. And you can see that this blue line, the voltage, starts increasing. Now increasing the voltage means that the voltage across the resistor, <coughs> excuse me, the voltage across the resistor is smaller, which means that the current is going to be smaller. So as we charge, we increase the voltage across the capacitor, which decreases the current through this circuit. So you can see that after some time has passed, the voltage across the capacitor gets close to the supply voltage and the current gets close to zero. And this is one thing that we can see. Uh, so if we have a capacitor in a circuit, at first there will be a, some current going into that capacitor because it's got to fill up its plates with charge. So it, it'll start filling up its plates with charge. And then once those plates get full, it's not going to want to take current anymore. So we can see that in this graph. Once the, once the voltage starts getting high, once that capacitor starts getting full, the current is going to decrease to zero. Okay. So after a while, we said initially this capacitor looks like a short circuit, but then after a while it starts looking like an open circuit whenever that voltage gets very big, Okay. whenever that voltage starts getting close to its maximum. So if you remember, in the previous LT Spice video, we saw we took a look at that DC operating point, and it said that it treats all capacitances as open circuits. And that's that's what we can do to sort of simplify our circuits: is treat capacitances as open circuits, because after the circuit has been running for a long amount of time, you know, think minutes or hours, then a capacitor is going to be charged, and it's not going to have any effect on the DC operating point of the circuit. Okay, so this is an example of a charging capacitor. We can also look at a discharging capacitor. So let me give you another circuit like that. So we actually don't even need a source for this one. All we're going to have is a capacitor and a resistor. And I messed up, so for these we're going to need a switch. This switch is going to be the same way. It closes at t equals zero. This capacitor, or this capacitor has a capacitance C. And we're going to say that it is initially charged to a voltage of DC, and I'll use, uh, I'll put in parentheses zero here. So that means the voltage across the capacitor at time zero, or its initial voltage, is going to be VC zero. Okay? And then this resistor just has a resistance of R. So let's think about this conceptually before we get into, before we get into the math. We have this charged capacitor, and then we're closing this switch and putting that capacitor across the resistor. Now what's going to happen is that all that charge that's built up on the capacitor is going to want to discharge through that resistor. Okay, but then once we discharge a little bit of charge, the voltage across the capacitor is going to drop, so the current is going to drop as well, and then this cycle is just going to continue, um, continue on as time passes. So once again, you could use differential equations to derive this uh, to voltage across the capacitor. But like I said, it's very complicated, so I'm just going to give you the answer. So the voltage across this capacitor is equal to Vc0, or the initial voltage on the capacitor, times e to the negative t over Rc. Okay? And this is for t greater than or equal to 0. Okay? Now if we have t less than zero, then we're just going to say Vc is equal to Vc zero, okay, or the initial voltage on that capacitor. So once again, it's pretty handy to just look at the graphs for this case. So that's what I've uh, gone ahead and made the graphs for this example. Now let me just go ahead and get it pasted into this whiteboard and we can look at it. So you can see from this graph Initially, we have zero current because we have that open switch. And then the voltage across that capacitor is kept at 10 volts. Okay, So the initial voltage for this example is 10 volts. Now, once we close that switch, the current immediately spikes up. And the reason this current immediately spikes up is because 
we close the switch, the capacitor has a high voltage, so it's going to push current through the resistor immediately. So the current immediately jumps up to its highest value. Okay, but then once it starts moving a little charge through the resistor, the voltage is going to drop, so we'll see that voltage dropping, and you actually can't see it because the voltage and the current drop at the same rate in this case. Okay, so the voltage is going to drop like that, and whenever the voltage drops, uh, the current, since we're just working with the resistor, the current is proportional to the voltage by Ohm's law, so the current also drops. In this example, I'm using a one ohm resistor, so the current or the voltage, sorry, voltage and current are equal. Okay, so you can see that. In this discharge problem, we start off with a high voltage, and then as it's discharging, the voltage decreases, and the current spikes and then decreases. Okay, so hopefully you have a little bit of an understanding about how capacitors behave in circuits as far as their uh, transient operation goes. Because remember, transient means as time passes. Okay, so we said that if we wait long enough, capacitors are pretty much like open circuits, and that's true. But so. Uh, if you care about how capacitors look as time passes, then this is going to be important, and this is what we've been talking about. So I want to talk about this just a little bit more before we move on to an actual numerical example. What we can see is that both of these equations that we've looked at so far have E to the minus T over RC. Okay? Now, there is a standard way of writing this, and this is you know more complex stuff. It's like control systems type stuff, but the standard way of writing an exponential decay is e to the negative t over tau. Okay, that fancy scripted t is tau, the Greek letter tau, and tau in our case is equal to R C, and this is called the time constant. So tau is the time constant. So we can experimentally sort of determine the effect of tau on uh, the transient response of these R or these resistor and capacitance circuits. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, you know, what is the significance of tau? And tau is going to correlate with a couple of things. So I'm going to give you the intuitive example first, that an increased tau pretty much equates to a what I like to think of as a slower circuit. So the reason I say slower is because it's going to take more time to charge, more time to discharge. So if you have this, if you have this higher tau, this higher time constant, it's going to take more time to charge and discharge. So you can think of that as like your circuit is just moving a little bit slower. It takes more time to do things. Okay, whereas if you have a smaller tau, then you have a faster circuit because it, it charges very quickly. Okay. So you can think of tau as sort of like the speed of the circuit. So if you have a high time constant, then that's going to equate to a slower circuit. Now, once again, I'm not just going to leave you hanging on this and make, make you have to visualize this. So uh, I once again plotted the effect of tau. Let me get this pasted into the whiteboard, and then we'll, talk, we'll look at it. So here we have the voltage across a capacitor plotted for two different values of the time constant. So we have tau is equal to 1 and tau is equal to 2. Now what you can see is that for tau is equal to 1, we start getting really close to the maximum value, 10 volts, pretty quickly, right? You know, by about 4 seconds, you know, by right here at about 4 seconds, we're pretty, we're pretty close to that maximum value of 10 volts. You know, I don't have all the grid lines on here, but we're pretty close to that value of 10 volts. Okay, whereas the red line, you know, it, you know, it takes like 8 seconds for us to get to that value. Okay, so we have a time constant that's twice as big. You can think of that as that this circuit is twice as slow. And you can see that it takes considerably more time for this capacitor to charge up. Okay, so this circuit, in my mind, the way I think of it is that this circuit is running slower. Okay, or it has a higher time constant. Or you can think of it as having a, you know, taking more time to do things in this circuit to get your circuit charged up. Okay. So I hope this kind of cleared up the time constant a little bit. Uh, now we can move on to an actual numerical example. So for this example, I wanted to make it a little more difficult because, you know, these capacitor problems can be a little bit challenging to understand at first. So I wanted to make it a little more difficult. That way you can get a good example and understand what's going on here. So you can already tell right off the bat that 
This one is a little more complicated because it has a structure that so far we haven't seen. Okay, so let me go ahead and finish drawing this. You can already tell it has a capacitor, a source, and a resistor. So instead of an R, I'm just going to put 10 ohms here. This capacitor is going to be 0 0.1 farads. Okay, and we have that 5 volt source. Now I'm going to add a note here. I'm going to say assume let's call this position 1 and position 2 assume switch was at 1 for a long amount of time for a good amount of time I'm just going to say for a long time and then we're going to flip this switch at t is equal to 0 so we're going to flip it from 1 to 2 and we're going to keep this point to the capacitor fixed so what that assume switch was at 1 for a long time means is that Pretty much, you can think of that switch being at 1 forever, previously, before t is equal to 0. And all that tells us is that this capacitor is fully charged to that supply voltage. Okay, So that's just a piece of information that's telling us Vc0 is going to be equal to the supply voltage, or 5 volts. Because that's a piece of information that we're going to need later on. Okay, So what we can see is that we charge up this capacitor with the 5 volt supply and then we flip the switch and it starts discharging that capacitor into this 10 ohm resistor. Okay, So we want to know what is, let me make a note of it here, what is the voltage, excuse me, what is the voltage across that resistor as time passes? Well, we know the voltage across the capacitor in a discharge case and since there's no other resistors uh, here in this circuit, the voltage across the capacitor is going to be equal to the voltage across the resistor okay? because of Kirchhoff's loop rule or Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we can say that Vr is equal to Vc and we know the equation for the voltage across the capacitor whenever it's discharging right? because we said previously Vc is equal to Vc0 times e to the negative t over tau. Right? So I tried to trick you there. I'm going to ask you, what is tau equal to? Okay, because this one is kind of important to know. So we can see tau, from what we've talked about previously, tau is equal to RC. So for this one, if I asked you what tau is equal to, that'll be R times C, that's 10 ohms, times 0 0.1 farads. So tau is just going to be 1. Okay, so tau is 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we can just rewrite this as Vc0 times e to the negative t. And then substituting in this value that we got for Vc0, we can say Vc is equal to 5 e to the negative t. Okay. And since we know Vc, we said that this is also equal to the voltage across the resistor. Okay. So we have solved this circuit, or sorry, we have solved the voltage across the capacitor, which gave us the voltage across the resistor. Okay. So now, what if I wanted to know the current through this resistor? Okay, so if I wanted to know IR, how do we do that? Well, for resistors, remember, let me, Ohm's law says V is equal to I times R. So if we want to know I, that's just going to be the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. Okay? So, in this case, that means I through the resistor is going to be this 5 e to the negative t over the resistance, which is 10. Okay? So, or you can just say 0 0.5 e to the negative t. So you can see that the voltage and current both exponentially decay in this resistor. And that, that goes hand in hand with what we saw here. That the voltage initially starts off high and then it decreases proportional to the uh, decrease in voltage. Okay. So the last thing we're going to do is that we're going to go ahead and graph this. Okay. And I'm going to save you the trouble and I'm just going to show you this so you can see the actual response. So let me get this posted into the whiteboard. Let me come down here and post this. Alrighty. So from this, we can see that there is initially a high voltage across this capacitor, shown by the blue line. 
there is initially no current through the capacitor shown by that red line. And then as soon as we turn the circuit on, the current is going to increase to its maximum. Its maximum is going to be 0 0.5 amps. So here is going to be 0 0.5 amps. And if you ignore the units, ignore the units here because those aren't correct. So here at the maximum, it's going to be 0 0.5 amps. The maximum voltage is going to be 5 volts. And then it's going to, they're both going to decrease as time passes. So the voltage is going to decay exponentially as well as the current will decay exponentially. Okay. So this is an example of a problem that you might see. You know, if you're, if you're in electrical engineering, you might see this on your circuits exam whenever you start talking about uh, capacitors and DC circuits. And really, once you know the formulas, they're not too bad to, they're not too bad to implement, or they're not too bad to analyze. All you have to do is, like I said, just make sure you're sanity checking your numbers. Make sure that you can intuitively explain why your graphs look the way that they do, because that can catch that can catch a lot of problems. I can tell you, whenever I was making these graphs, that I would have a lot of problems. So you know, if I was expecting, if I was expecting the capacitor to be discharging. And for some reason, you know, the voltage across the capacitor was going up. And that tells me that I did something wrong because the voltage, if a capacitor is discharging, is supposed to go down. So capacitors, they're a little bit hard whenever you implement them numerically or whenever you're analyzing them numerically. But intuitively, uh, they're not too bad to analyze. And having that intuitive understanding is what's really going to help you out and make sure that you're doing everything correctly whenever you absolutely need to. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, you know, I, like I said, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. I know I probably didn't explain everything in super fine detail, but I just want to keep uh, the discussion broad. That way we don't get bogged down in the details. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe for more content. Otherwise, I'm Aaron Carmen, and thank you for watching.